Hello Trailblazers, welcome back to Long Switch Academy. Today's video is all about taking our Lightning Web Components LWC skills to the next level. We've covered the basics, and now it's time to explore advanced concepts with real-world use cases. Buckle up as we unravel the intricacies of error handling, communication strategies, authentication, and much more. Whether you are a seasoned developer or just starting, this journey into the depths of LWC promises valuable insights and practical solutions. Before we take our first question of this segment, subscribe to our channel to learn and grow with us. Let's begin the video. Errors are an inevitable part of development, and in this section, we'll explore how to gracefully handle them in Lightning Web Components. Let's begin with our first question, which revolves around exception handling in LWC. Question number one. How can you handle errors in Lightning Web Components, and what is the recommended approach for error handling? The best answer for this question would be, in LWC, error handling is achieved through the try-catch block. You can catch errors in the rendered callback lifecycle hook or use a catch block with a promise. The recommended approach is to use the try-catch block to gracefully handle errors and provide a user-friendly experience. If the interviewer asks about a practical use case then you can use the following example. Imagine a scenario where a Lightning Web component is making an asynchronous call out to an external API using a try-catch block. You can handle potential errors, such as network issues or API responses, and display a meaningful message to the user. Communication is key, and Lightning Message Service empowers our components to talk seamlessly. Let's explore Lightning Message Service in the next question. Question number 2. What is the role of the Lightning Message Service in Lightning Web Components, and how does it facilitate communication between components? The best answer for this question would be, the Lightning Message Service allows components to communicate across the DOM, including between Visual Force Pages, Aura Components, and Lightning Web Components. It provides a PubSub, Publish Subscribe, model, allowing components to broadcast and subscribe to messages. A practical use case for above question can be the following. Consider a complex Salesforce dashboard where multiple Lightning Web Components need to update based on changes in a central data source. The Lightning Message Service can be used to broadcast changes, and subscribing components can update their UI accordingly. Ever wondered how to fetch data from external services? We've got you covered. Let's explore this in the next question. Question number 3. How can you make an HTTP callout in Lightning Web Components, and what are the security considerations? The best way to answer this question would be, in LWC, you can make HTTP callouts using the Fetch API or the XML HTTP Request API. Security considerations for making a HTTP callout via LWC include setting up remote site settings and CSP trusted sites for the external service. In case you use Apex Web Service for the callout then you need to set up the named credential and auth provider to provide the tailored access. You might also need to handle cores, cross-origin resource sharing, if applicable. Let's see a practical use case for the HTTP callout in LWC. Suppose you need to integrate a Lightning Web component with an external service to retrieve real-time data. Making an HTTP callout allows you to fetch and display dynamic information seamlessly. Level up your component communication game with Lightning Message Channels. Let's explore in the next question. Question number 4. Explain the concept of Lightning Message Channels in LWC and provide a use case where they are beneficial. You can answer it as follows. Lightning Message Channels are a type of Lightning Message service that allows for more specific communication between components. Components can publish and subscribe to a particular message channel, enabling more targeted communication. If I have to highlight one practical use case then we can consider the example of a multi-step form where each step is a separate Lightning Web component. Lightning message channels can be used to update the progress indicator or show, hide steps based on user actions, creating a more modular and scalable form structure. In Lightning Web Components, handling user input is fundamental to creating interactive and dynamic user interfaces. Let's explore user input and data binding in LWC in the next question. Question number 5. How can you handle user input in Lightning Web Components, and what is the significance of two-way data binding? The possible answer for this question can go like this. User input is primarily achieved through data binding, a powerful feature that connects the UI of a component with its underlying data. 
Two-way data binding is a powerful feature that allows you to bind an attribute's value to an input field and automatically reflect changes in both the UI and the underlying data. To understand the importance of two-way data binding in LWC, let's consider a practical use case of a form component in an application where users can update their contact details. Here the two-way data binding simplifies the process of capturing changes to the user's information in real time. For instance, as a user types their updated email address in an input field, the corresponding email property in the component's JavaScript is automatically updated. This seamless synchronization ensures that the UI stays in sync with the data model, providing an efficient and user-friendly experience. Before we move forward in this video, I wanted to pause and ask, do you have any questions, suggestions or doubts? If yes, then please feel free to use the comment section to dump your questions, suggestions or comments. We will try to respond to them at the earliest. Thank you for your patience with us and watching the video till this point. Without wasting a second, let's jump on the remaining questions. In LWC, the framework adopts a reactive programming paradigm to efficiently handle changes in data and UI updates. Let's see in the next question how LWC achieves its reactivity. Question number 6. How does Lightning Web Components leverage the concept of reactive programming, and what role does the at the rate wire decorator play in achieving reactivity in data retrieval? You can explain it like this. Reactive programming involves building applications by expressing the flow in propagation of data. In the context of LWC, this means that when the underlying data changes, the components automatically update to reflect those changes. The at wire decorator is a key tool in achieving reactivity. It allows LWC components to declaratively wire up a property or function to a data source, such as an Apex method or a standard Lightning Web component. To understand the practical use case of this let's consider a scenario where a LWC is displaying a list of recent transactions in a financial application. By using the at the rate wire decorator to fetch the transaction data from an Apex method, the component becomes reactive to any changes in the transaction records. If a new transaction is added or an existing one is updated, the component automatically reflects those changes, providing users with an up-to-date view of their financial transactions. In the next question join us as we explore how to handle authentication in Lightning Web Components, ensuring secure communication with external services. Question number 7. How do you handle authentication in Lightning Web Components when making API calls to external services? You can explain it like this. Authentication in LWC for external API calls involves creating a named credential in Salesforce and using it in Apex with the at the rate order enabled annotation. This ensures secure and authenticated communication between the Lightning Web Component and the external service. You can consider the following as the practical use case for the above. Consider a scenario where a Lightning Web Component needs to fetch data from a secured third-party API using named credentials for authentication ensures that the API calls are secure and compliant with Salesforce security standards. Dynamic UI make for engaging user experiences. In the next question, we are diving into conditional rendering in Lightning Web Components. Question number 8. Explain the concept of conditional rendering in Lightning Web Components and provide a use case where it is beneficial. The best explanation for this question would be, conditional rendering in LWC involves dynamically displaying or hiding elements based on a condition. It is achieved using the standard JavaScript if statement in the template. For practical use case of the conditional rendering you can consider a service ticketing system, where a lightning web component might conditionally render a resolution form only when the status of the ticket is marked as, resolved, streamlining the user interface based on the ticket's life cycle. In the next question we will be talking about how to extend the power of Lightning Web Components to Salesforce Communities. Question number 9. How can you leverage Lightning Web Components in Salesforce Communities, and what benefits do they bring to community development? The best answer to this question would include the following. Lightning Web Components can be seamlessly integrated into Salesforce Communities, providing a consistent and modern user experience. They bring benefits such as modularity, reusability, and the ability to create custom components tailored to community-specific requirements. If I have to mention a practical use case for this then I would consider a customer community. Lightning Web Components can be used to create custom UI elements, such as interactive product catalogs or personalized dashboards, enhancing the overall user engagement and satisfaction.
Efficient rendering is the key to a smooth user interface. Join us in the next question as we explore the track decorator in Lightning Web Components. Question number 10. What is the significance of the track decorator in Lightning Web Components, and how does it contribute to efficient rendering? You can explain it like this. The track decorator is used to mark a property as reactive, meaning that the component re-renders when the value of that property changes. It contributes to efficient rendering by allowing the framework to optimize the updates and render only the affected parts of the component. To highlight a practical use case for this we can consider a real-time chat application built with Lightning Web Components. The track decorator can be applied to the messages array. As new messages arrive, only the message list is re-rendered, providing a smooth and efficient user experience. That brings us to the end of our deep dive into the advanced concepts of Lightning Web Components. We've explored how to handle errors gracefully, establish seamless communication between components, make secure API calls, and enhance user interfaces with dynamic rendering. These skills are not just theoretical, they're tools you can use today to build robust, responsive, and secure applications on the Salesforce platform. As you embark on your own projects, remember to experiment, explore, and most importantly, enjoy the process of mastering Lightning Web Components. A big thank you from Longswitch Academy team. Thank you for joining us on this advanced journey into Lightning Web Components. Your time, engagement, and enthusiasm are what make this community vibrant and dynamic. If you found value in this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share it with your fellow developers, and hit that subscribe button to stay updated on more Salesforce development content. We appreciate your support and look forward to bringing you more in-depth tutorials, insights, and exciting discussions. Until next time, happy coding!